What about Croatia during the Second World War? Croatia was part of the Kingdom of Yugoslavia. This kingdom got taken down by the Axis powers after a swift invasion that occurred in April 1941. Then the independent state of Croatia saw the light of day. It became a state of absolute terror. Exactly how independent was this independent state of Croatia? That and more, you will find out in another countries in World War II episode, this time Croatia during the Second World War. Hey, good to have you back on the channel. If you're happy to be new on this channel, I'm Stefan, I'm a Dutch history teacher. I make videos about history for you and uh, I do that uh, at home, but also on location. And I'm now on location in Zagreb, north of the city, the capital of Croatia. And I'm gonna explain what this building used to be. But before we're gonna explain, subscribe first if you have not already and if you do so also hit that notification bell let's first discuss some background croatia was part of the kingdom of yugoslavia and during the interwar years there was much discontent of how politics developed croats felt oppressed by the serbs extreme movements emerged and one of these was the ultra nationalist movement the ustasha Croatian Revolutionary Movement. This movement was founded abroad by Ante Pavlic, who called himself the Poglavnik, which means leader or can be translated as first and foremost. This was around the time when King Alexander had announced his absolute dictatorship over the Kingdom of Yugoslavia in 1929. From abroad, the Ustasha carried out sabotage and terrorist actions. After the assassination of King Alexander, many of the Ustashas went to Italy where they were interned. Can you call the Ustasha? Fascist. Well, it's kind of hard to say because its ideology was drawn from Italian fascism, but also German Nazism, authoritarianism and peasantism. So it was not an exact copy of neither Italian fascism or German Nazism. For sure, the Ustasha were anti-Yugoslav and they wanted a large Croat state. On German pressure, Yugoslavia signed the Tripartite Pact on the 25th of March 1941. Then, on the 27th, Serbian military leaders seized power in a military coup in Belgrade. Hitler then vowed to destroy Yugoslavia. On the 6th of April, Orthodox Eastern Sunday, Operation 25, also known as Operation Punishment, was launched. The Axis invasion of Yugoslavia had begun. On the 10th of April 1941, the Germans day entered Zagreb, and on that day, Croatia successfully seceded from the Kingdom of Yugoslavia. Its proclamation had been stage managed by the Germans. The borders of the new Croatian state extended over almost 40% of the former Yugoslav Kingdom. It covered most of modern day Croatia and Bosnia and Herzegovina, as well as some parts of modern day Serbia and Slovenia. Catholic Croats amounted around half of the 6.5 million people. It had, furthermore, 750,000 Muslims, 40,000 Jews, and 1.9 million Serbs. It was called the independent state of Croatia, in short the NDH. But exactly how independent was this independent state of Croatia? Well, not that much. See, the Germans, they wanted economic advantages as well as a privileged status for the ethnic Germans residing in the NDH. Therefore, they were heavily influenced in the country's economy. From day one, there were German soldiers on the streets of Zagreb and Germans, they occupied important places in the country. Now, officially, the country became a monarchy with the Italian royal Tomislav II on the throne, yet he never resided there. The real leader, so to say, became Anto Pavlic, who at the moment of the proclamation of the NDH was still abroad, but he soon returned to his new state. A significant part of the population, generally in towns and particularly in Zagreb, viewed it favorably. The Ustashas had a modicum of popular support in Western Herzegovina and Lika, but virtually nowhere else. However, most people accepted the resurrection of a Croatian state with the feeling that the war had ended quickly and that the worst had been avoided. But in reality, the worst was about to come. On the 17th of April, a law was passed on the protection of the people and the state. Um, what did this mean? Well, it meant that the Ustashas could kill anyone they deemed a threat for their power. And there were basically three groups that became the victims of the Ustasha terror. I'm talking about the Serbs, the Jews 
and aroma. An apparatus of control and repression was put into place quickly. A Nustasha militia was established with some 4,500 regulars and 25 to 30,000 irregulars. Later, one unit was named the Black Legion. The NDH army was named Domobrans. The Domobrans was armed by the Germans and by the summer of 1941 had around 45,000 men. Later, the Croatian Legion was established for Croats to fight on the Eastern Front. Military all members of the former Yugoslav army that originated from the territory of the NDH had to swear an oath of allegiance to the Poglavnik. So did government personnel. The Ustasha movement became known for its brutal killings of Serbs, Jews and Roma. On the first day, Jews were arrested. First killings started in May and confinement in camps occurred from July. A decree formalized setting up of concentration camps. The most infamous was complex in which Jews, Gypsies and Serbs would meet their fate in the most horrifying ways imaginable. This was a death camp and there were also concentration camps for children such as Sisak. By the end of July, Pavelic claimed there were no more than 12,000 Jews left in his state. But the country had a bigger population of Serbs, and the Serbs were also seen as the undesirables. Statements were made to expel them, convert them, or if necessary, kill them. It is hard to say how many were actually expelled to German-occupied Serbia, since many just fled. An estimated 180 to 200,000 Serbs fled to German-occupied Serbia. But many died at the hands of the Ustasha death squads, who roamed the countryside spreading terror. Men, women and children were butchered in the most horrifying ways imaginable. What makes it even more sick is that the Ustasha sometimes took pictures of their killings as some kind of macabre pleasure. The Catholic Church initially greeted the setting up of a Croat state, but later protested when news of the killings reached them. Muslims weren't targeted by the Ustashas and some Muslims even joined the Ustasha death squads. This revived memories of the World War I Austrian encouraged violence to Serbs by Muslims. The Germans that were present in the area were not keen on the violence that soon spiraled out of control. They were actually appalled by the savagery of the Ustasha death squads. As one German general who was stationed in Zagreb put it and tried to see the nuance here, the subtlety, the Ustashas have gone raving mad. Yeah, try to put this in perspective. If a German general says you've gone raving mad in World War II, that definitely does say something. Also, the Italians were bewildered by the killings they witnessed. Although the Italians had orders not to intervene, in some cases they did so by disarming Eustasha militias or helping those in need. Later, Anta Pavlic outlawed the wild killings, but this was no more than cosmetic since Hitler had advised Pavlic to pursue a nationally intolerant policy. Let's take a look at the resistance. According to historian Stefan Pavlovic, the first resistance against the Ustasha was not ideologically motivated. No, it was pure out of survival as local priests and merchants armed themselves against the Ustasha violence. It soon took on an ethnic bias. Later organized resistance sprang up. The story of the Yugoslav World War II resistance is extensive and complicated. In short, there were two resistance groups, the nationalist Chetniks, led by Draza Mihalovic, and the communist partisans, led by Jozef Broz Tito. Both started their operations in neighboring Serbia. Serbia, also known as the Serbian residual state, was under direct German control, although there was a puppet government led by Milan Nedic. The Germans wanted to maintain order and exploit Serbia's resources, since their biggest fight was in the USSR from June 1941 onwards. Yet, the resistance activities made them carry out brutal reprisals. Soon, the resistance fighters moved into Bosnia, which was at that moment part of the NDH. In the following years, the Axis carried out huge actions against the resistance fighters. When Italy surrendered in September 1943, 
the NDH took over several territories of the Italians. In August 1944, high-ranking Croat officers they staged a coup against Pavelic, which failed. Pavelic remained in power, but not for long, because soon the partisans got the upper hand and they liberated the territories. And why do I say liberated? Well, also the partisans committed grave atrocities. The big example happened at Bleiburg. Near the end of the war, Zagreb was abandoned by the Ustasha and Domobrans troops and they retreated into Austria together with Cossacks and collaborating Slovenes. There, they surrendered to the British. However, the British disarmed them and handed them over to the partisans. And many of these men were then shot without a trial. Someone who also didn't have a trial but made it out alive was NDH leader Anta Pavlic. And he resided here in this bunker. There were tunnels underneath this complex and so he managed to get away and he never answered for his crimes. The last battle that took place in the NDH that was by that time disbanded was the Battle of Otsak. That actually was the last battle that took place during World War II in Europe which occurred on the 25th of May 1945 which was actually roughly two weeks after the German capitulation. Croatia became part of the second Yugoslavia. It was the Yugoslavia by Joseph Broz Tito and eventually this state also fell apart. If you'd like to know more about that you can click right here. If you'd like to know more about countries in World War II you can click right here. Thank you so much for watching. Give a like, leave a comment. If you want to support me you can do so. Links are in the description, PayPal and Patreon. Thank you so much. And all the best from Zagreb, Croatia.